We're coming up on 6 o'clock, and an all-new hour of Way 3 Sunrise begins right now. Working for you. This is Way 3 News Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm Scott Adkins. So good to see you. Straight to breaking news now. An icon of the Louisville dining scene, Lens Paradise Cafe, closes its doors for good. The restaurant made the announcement in a surprise press release sent out at 1.30 this morning. We'll tell you what the company president had to say in just a moment. Right, here's the latest on the uh, temperatures outside. It is warm across Kentucky and uh, right now 57 in Jasper, 56 up in Bedford, 63 degrees, 63 right now here into the Louisville area. That's about 20 degrees above where we should be for a high. One area feeling the impact of that? Yep, Paley Peaks. They can't make any snow right now too warm for that and what they did have as a base is melting away. But hang in there for you ski lovers because we're going to have plenty of time here to make up for that coming up in the next couple of weeks. Certainly, we'll get into that later this morning. Here's the rainfall though, developing to our south. It's a lot of rain. In fact, it'll break out, maybe some rumbles of thunder. It's heading our way and it should arrive here later this morning. So plan for a stormy part of the day until about 2 or 3 this afternoon. We'll get a break. We warm up. Maybe close to record territory and then another batch of rain as we head towards sunrise tomorrow. Details on all of that and more coming up in a few minutes, Scott. All righty, Brian. An iconic, eclectic restaurant will be closing its doors. Lynn's Paradise Cafe is now shut down. The owner made it official in an overnight statement. This after Way 3 reported some employees at the restaurant say they were being treated unfairly. Lynn's Paradise Cafe, one of Louisville's most popular restaurants and a kitschy staple of the Highlands, abruptly closed its doors for Good Friday. Company President Lynn Winter gave no specific reason for her decision, just saying in a statement, thank you to all of our loyal customers and faithful employees for making it possible to run a 22-year business. It's been a great run and we've had a ton of fun. The time has come to move on to new creative ventures. Earlier Friday, Lynn's Paradise Cafe came under intense intense scrutiny. Current and former Lens employees in Kentucky Jobs with Justice launched a campaign aimed at stopping what the group called disrespect and abuse of the restaurant's workers. The group cited the termination of two employees over a new restaurant policy requiring servers to carry $100 cash at all times in order to tip out co-workers. I thought it was absurd and um, completely unfeasible and to ask somebody to bring in that, to have $100 cash on you on a daily basis um, in order to tip out the support staff. Former employees who wanted to remain anonymous say they're living paycheck to paycheck. Kentucky Jobs with Justice claim the $100 policy is against Kentucky law. Friday afternoon, a company spokesperson said the $100 policy is personnel issues and the company is trying to adjust to an ever-changing economy telling us we're reviewing all the issues raised, we're listening to the concerns, and we will respond at an appropriate time and in an appropriate manner. Hours later, the company abruptly closed. And we'll have much more on this story throughout Sunrise and right now on Way3.com. Paying to cross the new Ohio River bridges. It's something nobody wants to do, but everybody will have to do once tolls take effect. Well, maybe not everyone. If some state lawmakers have their way, the working poor could make tolls their roadkill. Way 3's Connie Leonard explains how it's all going to work. Well, not everybody's going to be on board for this one, but if tolls become a reality, the Second Street Bridge just behind me will certainly be jammed with traffic from people trying to avoid having to pay to cross the bridge. But two state lawmakers say if their bill goes through, there won't be much of a problem. It's a message aimed at the tolling authority. The poor have to be protected. Friday, Representatives Jim Wayne and Reginald Meeks introduced legislation to the General Assembly. Kentuckians who work in Indiana making less than $25,000 a year would be exempt from bridge tolls. Now we're talking about the mother who cleans the toilets at the Sheraton Hotel over in Indiana who lives in, in, this, in this city and has several children. That mother would pay about $500 more a year because the Bridges Authority plans to set tolls at a dollar each way. 
But why should anybody get a free ride? We don't give them discounts at the airport. Well, I think that, that person has a valid point. The, the, the larger issue that he's really addressing is why are we having tolls in the first place? Wayne says Kentucky and Indiana have the money to pay for the bridges without the tolls. But he says the money in Frankfurt is controlled by rural lawmakers who unfairly distribute it, even though taxpayers in Jefferson County are paying most of the bills. For instance, in 2011, Senator Williams' uh, district of Cumberland County uh, received $3,000 per person in Cumberland County for new road projects. In Jefferson County, it was less than $150 per person. So what about all the legwork and paperwork needed for the toll-free ride? I think the intention's good, but I just have concerns about enforcing it and, and determining who gets, who gets that benefit. Wayne says the working poor would pay tolls up front like everybody else. Then come tax time, it's a simple check of a box on the return. They drop in the receipt, and that's it. TARC buses would also be excluded from the tolls. I think that that would be something that may be a little bit more practical because you're getting more people across the bridge versus having a lot of uh, car traffic. I asked Representative Wayne what kind of movement he thought House Bill 129 would get this session. He's not sure, but says so far it has a lot of support with eight co-sponsors. Reporting from downtown Louisville, Connie Leonard, Way 3 News Weekend Sunrise. Thanks, Connie. It's 606. A disturbing story this morning. An Indiana man has been arrested, accused of raping a nine-year-old girl. 25-year-old Aaron Hofferkamp of North Vernon was arrested yesterday at the Trimble County Courthouse. Police say Hofferkamp raped the girl on January 2nd after her mother left their home in Bedford. In Meade County, a family is planning a funeral for a young mother killed in a crash with an ambulance. Police say 27-year-old Sarah Hotzel was driving with her 10-month-old in the back seat when she ran a stop sign at Highway 313 and Highway 333 near Flaherty. Police say she crashed her car into the ambulance. She died at the scene. Her baby is being treated at Cozair Hospital for injuries believed to be non-life-threatening. The EMTs were ejected from the ambulance during the crash. Both suffered serious injuries and are being treated at University Hospital. It's heartbreaking for everybody, especially the EMS people. I knew them personally. And it's all over Facebook. They're sending prayers from different states down here to us. Hoddle will be buried on Monday at First Baptist Church in Brandenburg. A third car was also hit. The driver of that vehicle went to the hospital but has since been released. A Metro police officer is under investigation, accused of lying about an incident involving a student. Officer Jackie Miller worked off duty as a security officer at Frost Middle School. The alleged altercation happened back in October at the school. According to a complaint, Miller had a physical altercation with a 12-year-old on school property. Miller is accused of filing a juvenile citation against the student, knowingly lying about what really happened in order to cover up his use of force. According to the documents, Officer Miller admitted in a taped statement to the Police Integrity Unit that he knew the student had not committed an offense. He now faces charges of false swearing and official misconduct. Well, the father of a now 24-year-old man who was found after being abducted at the age of five is speaking out. Police announced Thursday that Richard Wayne Landers Jr. was found living in Long Prairie, Minnesota. He was living under the name Michael Jeff Landers. Landers was abducted in July 1994 by his paternal grandparents during a custody dispute. It all happened in Indiana. Police say the grandparents have verified the identity of the man who is now married and expecting a child. Landers' father, who now lives in Kendallville, Indiana, says he always believed he would see his son again. We always just kept it in the back of our minds that we believed we were going to see him again. But until I actually get to walk up and say hello to him again, I, I don't know that it's going to be real. The grandparents were suspected at the time of the abduction. The Minnesota Sheriff said the case will eventually be forwarded to federal prosecutors for possible charges. Coming up, the gun control debate in Washington intensifies as Vice President Biden leads the charge for reform. Stay put. Hey, flood watches have been posted now for parts of the Ohio Valley. Does it include you? And if, even if it doesn't, how much rain are we talking about as we head through the next 24 hours? I'll let you know coming up right after the break.
Everybody has a different route to work. It's not always 64, 71, or 65. And here we have rush hours. Drive